Hey Ben. Well, um, we were talking about learning songs and managing to reproduce them um, while playing with a backing track and with no actual guidance from a recording, an original recording whatsoever. So, uh, my two cents on this, or at least how I, how I personally do it. Uh, I tend to listen to the piece a lot, and if I can listen to it in chunks, as the lessons here at GMC are presented, the better. Um, I get it into my system, and if I'm able to reproduce it with my voice along with the uh, original recording, then I go straight towards the metronome and try to sing it against the metronome. If I get it against the metronome, at a slow speed, of course speed can be gradually uh, raised, but the idea is to understand the length of all the notes, because this is what actually uh, sets things apart. The length of the notes and the length of the spaces between the notes, the rests, right? So uh, the idea, as Gabe, I think, uh, pointed it out, is to uh, get the actual piece of music into your system and try to reproduce it with your voice. And what's more, try to reproduce it against a metronome, because the metronome does not offer any landmarks, rhythmic landmarks. It's just a click. It's just a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the important thing against this one, two, three, four, um, when you play against it, you and you're able to do it right, you develop your internal clock and you're able to uh, have a much better sense of timing. So for instance, let me see, what, what guitar should I grab? Let's take this acoustic one here. Uh, yeah, I have two acoustic guitars in my home right now because I'm uh, working on the acoustic material with my band. And just moving this model away from here. Just a water bottle, don't worry. <laughs> so, if I have this phrase, I don't know, let's say what sort of phrase. See, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you have... this with your voice as perfectly as possible or not. The idea is to be able to sense the, the changes. See here we have Okay, so uh, you can see my right hand now. I'm going to do it again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. See, I have two bars uh, at this phrase. And two bars out of this other phrase. So now that you memorize this part, you know that after two bars you have to shift your phrase. This is just a simple example that I showed you here, but uh, basically this is the principle that you have to follow in order to uh, make a visible change in your, uh, your playing against a backing track. Counting also helps, and if you're able to stomp your foot against the ground in the rhythm of the song, actually the fourths uh, or eighths or something like that, uh, following the uh, the song's tempo, 
well, your clock, your internal clock is going to be even better. Well, this is a, a subject um, that can be discussed uh, on an extensive basis. So, uh, if you could record yourself against a backing track uh, playing a simple phrase and then record yourself against a metronome playing the same phrase and post them here, we can discuss on those recordings, okay? So this is exactly, exactly what I want you to do. Record yourself against the backing track, just a few tens of seconds, not that much, a phrase even, just a little bit, because we need to work on a principle, not all the, on the whole track, okay? And then record the same phrase against a metronome and try to be as in time as possible. Do this uh, after you have memorized the part that you want to record, okay? So, that being said, I'm waiting for your recording. Okay, man? Cheers.